So today, I'm here to talk to you about foods for the third time, but I promise you it's the last. So, while you all moan and groan, I just ask that you look at these two slides. So first there's this slide, and now this slide. So what do you think the difference is between those two slides? Well, let me tell you. The first slide, all the foods had GMOs. And in the second slide, none of the foods had GMOs. So you're probably wondering, why should we listen to her? Well, if you were born after 1996, according to a 2008 article from the Organic Consumer Association, it says that all foods in America since 1996 have contained some form of GMOs, or they've been allowed to contain some form of GMOs if they don't have them. So another reason is, this is my third time talking about GMOs. And also, I took an environmental chemistry class that really helped me to learn about the environment and how what we eat impacts what we're doing. So, <clears throat> I believe that stricter laws need to be made for GMOs, specifically targeting the company Monsanto's. So today, I'm going to talk to you about two major health problems that these GMOs are causing then followed by a long-term solution, a short-term solution, as well as a visualization <clears throat> for what happens when other countries are given GMOs. And then I'll wrap up. So the first health problem is, according to the 2013 documentary GMO OMG, Monsanto's malicious seeds are basically pesticides it's just like Adam and Eve eating the forbidden fruit in the garden. They all have pesticides. They all harm our health. <clears throat> and you really do not want that. Why would you want to eat pesticides? That's super gross and disgusting. So to go on with that, the second health problem is, according to the 2015 Scientific America article, it said that the World Health Organization found within Monsanto's malicious seeds of corn that there is glycophosphate, which has been found to cause cancer. They tested some animals and they found that all these animals that ate these corn seeds had some form of cancer. So <clears throat> when you're eating your bowl of macaroni and cheese every night, you could possibly just, it's just like eating a bowl of cancer. So now, I'm going to talk to you about the problems that have been caused kind of locally and how we can fix them. So my long-term solution is your vote really does matter. So you need to vote for laws that will help diminish GMOs, especially the ones that will regulate <coughs> Monsanto's, the company. So in from a business insider article in 2018 there was this man that said he allegedly hit the reason for his cancer was because of the company monsanto's and he sued the company for two for 289 million dollars but monsanto's because they're such a large corporation they got away with everything and they only had to pay 49 million dollars his story really does need to be heard. And his story can be heard through a number of ways. First, the way that you're voting. Voting can drastically impact how this corporation would have been dealt with and also just through the means of hearing his voice and reading the news. So for a short-term solution, while we don't get to vote as often, as we spend our money. The, so your George Washington really does speak louder than what you think. When you are spending a product on Monsanto's, it's kind of like you're buying cancer. So a Green America article titled, what cost, does your, what cost does it mean to your vote, your dollar that you're spending? It says that, spend, that putting a local dollar, spending a local dollar is like putting it right back into the community bank. So instead of spending your dollar on a large corporation like Monsanto's, I urge that you spend your dollars on short-term solutions 
that would impact your local community. And by giving them the dollars, you're obviously giving it back to the community as well as not funding Monsanto's. So you may have some reservations and I completely understand. First, your reservation might be that you believe that that you might be hesitant to you know spend your money because sometimes GMOs the non GMO option is the more expensive option but as I've said before is it cheaper really in the long term it might not be you might get cancer there are other health impacts you're eating these pesticides which are absolutely gross <clears throat> and then secondly you don't really I mean I'm sure you don't know a lot about GMOs so I urge you to watch the 2013 documentary OMG GMO <clears throat> so next I want to give you guys a visualization as to what really happens when other countries are given GMOs for the most part GMOs are banned in many many countries so after, according to the 2013 documentary, GMO, OMG, it stated that after a huge hurricane devastated Haiti, the company Monsanto reached out to many of the farmers in that country and they sent them their seeds. However, what do you think they did with their seeds? You would have thought they would have planted them, left them, and you know, used them. But as soon as they saw they were from Monsanto's and contained GMOs, they burned them. They said the seeds, they were like, it was like seeds from hell. So they burned them and they took their loss and just kind of went with it. So I think that if a, comp or if a country like Haiti is burning their seeds, I don't understand why we're still using Monsanto seeds. So. To review everything, I just want to urge you that you're, that we need to make laws that will help create, that will help get rid of GMOs. We need, your vote really does matter and the way that it impacts Monsanto's is you need to vote for things against Monsanto's and your dollar really does matter. Spend it wisely, spend it on non-GMO products. And I urge you to look at all the products that you eat, the labels and things, they all say if they contain GMOs or if they don't, it's kind of a regulation that they have to go by. So if the next time you're at the grocery store, just buy one product that doesn't have GMOs, you might be surprised, you probably already do that. So to conclude, I promise you I'll never talk about food again, but I will not stop sitting in the back of the classroom eating my fair trade non-GMO certified granola bar.